Welcome to another Understanding Crypto series presentation by Thomas Plunkett. Today we're going to take a look at um, adding in some greater swarm capabilities to our Ethereum Web3 uh, DAP auction that we previously took a look at. Uh, this video and these slides are all available under a Creative Commons license. So let's talk about um, storing the auction DAP on swarm. Our auction DAP already uses swarm to store the uh, image for each auction. You know, this is a much better and more cost efficient solution than attempting to store data on Ethereum. Remember, we spend gas for everything we store on Ethereum. And so to actually store an image file on the Ethereum blockchain would be extremely expensive. So instead, we want to store those images somewhere else and just have a reference on Ethereum to where those images are located. Um, and so what we can do is we can actually store our front end and our images in Swarm and then run it from a Swarm node directly instead of leveraging a centralized web server or file server. So to get started, first you need to have Swarm installed and initialize your Swarm node. Swarm's part of the Ethereum Foundation's Go Ethereum suite of tools. Um, and you can follow the instructions for installing uh, Go ETH and installing your Swarm binary uh, release following the Swarm documentation. And once installed, you can check out what version you're running and so on. Uh, and one, then you can start running Swarm. And first, you want to tell it how to connect to an instance of Geth so it has access to the JSON RPC API uh, that is provided by the Ethereum node. And so starting it will show you something like this uh, output here when you're when you're running it. Um, you should confirm your swarm node is running running correctly by connecting to the local swarm gateway at localhost 8500 uh, and see a screen something like this. Uh, welcome to swarm enter the hash of a or ENS of a swarm hosted file below that you want to connect to. So once you have your local Swarm node and gateway running, you're ready to upload files to it. Uh, you can upload those files to Swarm, and then any Swarm node will be able to access those files simply by putting in the reference to the file hash. This is very similar to what you could do on interplanetary file system, IPFS. You would have, you know, once you upload a file, you could then, you know, reference it using the unique identifier. So here's, we'll show you a quick little example how this could work. So uh, I could use this to upload a file here. Uh, I'm going to upload a auction DAP readme file. And then I get this hash, EC13042, whatever, which is the hash that refers to the specific readme file I just uploaded. Um, and then I can use that hash uh, from any Swarm node's public Swarm gateway to retrieve this readme file back. So while uploading one file is relatively straightforward it's a bit more complicated if you want to upload all of your front end applications that's because your various uh you know dap front end applications includes resources like html cascade and style sheets javascript libraries and so on that have embedded references to each other um, and if you put the files in the wrong order, those references will be broken. Normally, a web server translates URLs to local files and then serves the correct resources. We can do the same thing with Swarm by packaging our DAP uh, before doing the upload. So in fact, in our auction DAP, we have a script for packaging all these resources on Swarm. Uh, and I'm showing you the script here. You've got some C, uh, a change directory command, an NPM command, uh, and then we've got some attributes and a build. So the result of this command is a new directory, uh, code, auction, DAP, front end, dist, that will contain our entire application DAP front end packed together. Um, and um, now you can upload the entire DAP to Swarm using the up command and the recursive option it will upload everything to Swarm. And we can tell Swarm that index.html is the default path for loading this, uh, this particular DAP. 
Uh, and so here we're showing you just running the command there, doing the recursive upload, and our entire auction DAP is hosted on Swarm and accessible by the URL. And uh, now we can access it and we can run it like a web application on Swarm. Uh, without having to have a centralized web server and you can do something very similar to um, in IPFS. Now one of the disadvantages is that our URL is a little more unfriendly than a traditional URL. Look at what our URL is. Our swarm URL is bcc colon double slash and it looks like a hash. It's not like triple w mywebsite.com. Um, so our user, you know, user, all right, we've got this much less user friendly URL. And so the question is, is are we forced to go into a really bad situation with unfriendly URLs? And the answer is no. Uh, in my next presentation, I'm going to talk about Ethereum's name service, will allow, which will allow us to have nice and friendly URLs for our decentralized apps that are located in a uh, decentralized storage solution like Swarm or IPFS. So tune in next time when we talk about ENS, the Ethereum naming service.